obviously we've been friends for many years. I didn't even know about League of Legends before I started this channel, but you've been playing League of Legends for how many years now, Josh? Uh, I think like 10. 10 Jesus or 11. Christ, get a yeah. life, my God. Yeah. And it's like the only game I play. Are you part of the toxic fan base that will tell people all sorts of mean things like about their moms and stuff? Generally, I try to keep it to just like trash talking my brother while we play. But yeah, like if somebody's mean first, I, I, I'll go back, but I try not to be the initiator. <laughs> but there's a, a lot of salt understand. mining in this community. For sure. <laughs> Obviously, you're an opera singer, you know music, but have you ever sat down and properly listened to any of these themes from League of Legends? No, I not since like maybe season four or five. What season are they on now? Like... 12 11 Jesus. i think i used to like get hyped for the first couple seasons because i was like oh what's this new champion do but then yeah. they just started releasing so many of them and you know well so this is basically an education for you yeah i think so well what i really love is if we could sit down and like basically listen to the piece and then after the piece is finished talk about some of the musical themes we hear some of the characterization things especially if you know a character like i know them from the music and i don't know them from any concept i mean i've heard their voices and stuff but i don't know anything about them i like as a gameplay like mechanic let's start up with something uh pretty recent actually let's start up with uh still here it's the uh season 2024 cinematic so you probably didn't watch it tomorrow is a hope never a promise
So you never saw that, right? No, no. What What do you think? Do you did you recognize those characters and stuff? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I got them all. I thought it was really cool when the, there's a character in there, the one who like draws the line with his staff, uh, and then he, like ends up taking that sword up. I thought that was a different character at first because uh, I thought it was Jax at first because Jax his oh, whole mm-hmm. thing is like I don't have a real weapon, so I just beat people with like random objects I find and. <laughs> Then when he like had his sword and did the wind wall, that was like a pretty sick reveal because it was like Yasuo. He's one of the original 40, right? I think Yasuo, if he's not, he's definitely like the original. Like, I think he's like the first few seasons for sure. What do you think of the music? I think sometimes I feel a little guilty because it definitely like evokes a lot. Like, you know, sometimes, you know, like with a classical background, I'm like, oh, is this simple or not but like and then i hear it i'm like oh i'm hyped (laughs) like yeah yeah, it's it's good i really enjoy it every cinema song they have is like a banger and it's they're all good I know. And that's the thing too, that I find about that piece is that it's so galvanizing and it's it like, what's also really interesting is that it does the quintessential pop song thing where it builds upon itself. Like it still has chorus verse, but the ascension that it takes, like, I don't know, like even seeing, K- I have no connection to Kayla Morgana, but like even yeah. seeing like whichever one is the purple one, yeah. you know, like when she steps in to like beat the crap out of Aatrox and you just like yeah. see her, like, like, it's just like, Oh my God. Like, you know, well, and it's so cool. Like, I don't want to, you know get too nerdy or too in depth but like no, i, can. I didn't know that like kale and morgana had like reunited because i think when i started playing kale and morgana were sisters and then they got like torn apart by right. ideology kind of, like, old heaven yeah, yeah. hell yeah. story uh, so it was very cool to see them like teaming up again the climax of all that to fight you know atrox like you know the new big bad uh, was very interesting. I also like that Kindred appears a lot. Kindred's one of my favorite characters musically, but also like thematically, like what Kindred represents, I find so interesting. Like the lamb and the the wolf, sort of the wolf symbolized with someone like doesn't want to die or someone like is fighting against it, then the wolf has to step in. Actually, throughout this entire video, if you rewatch it, there are many instances that uh, you see, like when Yasuo, when the arrow comes at him, you actually see the wolf in the trees. It's just really oh, cool. Yeah. So Kindred's yeah. always in there because it's all about this whole song. It's like still here is all, you know what I mean? It's it's really, yeah, it's deep. It's it's awesome. In the same vein, let's listen to season 2022 cinematic and watch it. This is The Call.
they both follow similar thematic ideas, obviously. But like of the two, do you have one that you prefer over the other? I think maybe I'll lean towards the the call. It throws back to a lot of those original like frail yard themes i think league players we've gotten so wrapped up in the void the shadow isles stories that you forget that the frail yard was like one of the original stories going on and so i think it was very cool to see you know volley bear and sejuani and olaf and and orn the overarching theme of orn like not fighting but making all these weapons that are going to be used in these combats is is very cool so interesting to me because orin is such a passive character like a pacifistic character almost but at the same time clearly you're right he's like also like directly contributing to the battle by providing weapons (laughs) yeah yeah also what i really like about this is the slow build up into it and and also it just feels a bit more almost guttural or like a little bit more like desperate whereas whereas like still here is really good but it maybe it's a little bit prettier yeah like that guttural kind of is more for me kind of evokes more of like a battle thing maybe uglier like more real kind of yeah yeah. sense to it it's crazy how music can do that huh because we don't often think about that two seemingly similar thematic videos can be completely different sonorally yeah. depending on like how it's approached and written i think it's uh, also very cool like throwing like pantheon and leona battling in targon there and like you're kind of at the end you're like is that aurelian soul coming in to like mm. are they gonna like put aside their differences to fight the, you know, Aurelian soul is like an older character, but he got reworked. And I think in his new rework, he's much more powerful and he feels more powerful in the game because you have a global alt that like shakes the whole map. So a soul feels more impactful. And so I think it's, they did a good job of representing how powerful his character is. When we talk about League, we tend to talk about the toxicity, but we don't really talk about the artistic like value that comes in each of these even something like that i would have never i didn't realize that a soul has a freaking global like ultimate that rocks the entire map like that's amazing and it also makes these like cinematic videos so much more like almost like we get the fleshing out of a character through different means whether it's music or video or it's such an interesting thing that only video games can do really where we sort of get multiple different experiences with the same characters when they flesh them out it's so cool yeah well and I think they did a good job in representing that even in the gameplay in the sense that like, depending on the patch and and how balanced it is at the time, Aurelian Soul is a character that only gets stronger and stronger. And so the whole game, you're kind of like gank him, keep him down, because if you don't, he's going to take over the whole game and you can't beat a super, I mean, you can, but it's hard. It's very difficult to beat a very fed giant Aurelian Soul. And so you kind of work together, I feel like, uh, in some patches to kind of keep him from carrying the game. Since we saw Orn in the call, I figured that would be the first proper champion thing we listened to. Have you ever listened to Orn's theme? Yeah, I don't know that I sat down and like have sought it out, but I think I've heard it, you know, peripherally.
obviously I know that you know Orin as a character, but like what sort of personality traits do you think come through in that music? Because these champion themes are so focused on a character's personhood. Yeah, I, I think it's really cool because the first thing you hear is like one of like strength and ruggedness. It seems like a simplistic mantra kind of, but mm. like it does have like ch- like three different elements in it or that I heard at least it was like the crafting element, right? The yeah. very nostalgic, like we all know that type of music. Like I'm going into a forge here. I'm crafting this weapon. It's going to be awesome. But then it has this, like, I don't know if those were bagpipes where it's just almost cuts out and it's just that like reed instrument, whatever mm-hmm. that is. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, it starts with like the drums of war and the clanging, but then it goes to this like passive, like very simple village music. And then it builds back up to that drums of war. So it almost feels like while it is what he does, it almost feels like he has to be like um, he's chained to it in a way. He has to always kind of go back to it. It's so interesting, like (laughs) what we can take from these themes. And it's actually why I've really enjoyed listening to these because you really can dissect and explore um, a character's personality much in the same way we can if we're singing Tosca or Elixir of Love or something where we can really feel the sense of Nemorino's passion for Adina and so on and so forth. Yeah. So it's something that I think like for us opera singers, like it's, it, it, it kind of comes fairly natural to us to be able to hear characteristics of a person. He's a craftsman, right? And so you get that sense like he's just there doing his job. Like, mm-hmm. yes, he hates his brother, right? Like, yes, there's like a, a bunch of drama. But I also like that the humming, I, th- this is all been passed after reading it and discovering it, but also the humming is all about, you know, his followers who like love him to death. And so like, I almost feel like, is that a song that he's singing? Is it a song that they're singing? And as they wait for him to come down the mountain again, it's so interesting how there's these little, little details. But I agree with you that the overall sense is really just like, he, he's just a, a hardworking man up in his little hole working yeah. away yeah i think it's cool because he's like to him i think it's like what is that bison quote like to you it was life-changing to me it was a tuesday <laughs> and i feel like orn is like i'm just building a weapon and then somebody gets it and they're like this is the most epic weapon that's <laughs> ever been created so most of the stuff that i put here is all stuff older since i know that you love your your original 40 but there is some newer stuff but i, I wanted to make sure that we really cover some of the oldies book goodies if you will i know that you play uh fiddlesticks a lot but have you ever listened to fiddlesticks theme i don't think that i've again sat down and listened to it i think i may have watched one of your videos that kind of dissected it a little bit so you're a good friend that's why let's check out the the music and this sort of gameplay uh champion trailer of uh fiddlesticks it's actually really interesting I'm, i'm curious to hear your insights on it When fields like calm and wind stand still Run home, run home As the crows make night of the fading Hide now. Mm-hmm. 
That's another banger, man. It takes you on a roller coaster. It's nuts. Like at first, you know, it feels like a mother just singing like a lullaby mm. to her kid. Yeah. You know, and then you get that like eerie string, you that know, coming over thing, top. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, oh shit. It took me to like this mother and her child, and they're singing this to each other, and you're wondering. Like at first I was like, oh, she's just tucking her in. And this is something you say because you live in fiddlesticks land. So like you, you sing this song every night so that you don't, you know, you come home, you don't linger in the woods. You don't, you know, you don't look at these things that don't look human. You just come home. But then like the music builds and you're like, oh, is she trying to hide her child and keep them calm and singing this because she knows Fiddlesticks is coming? Or like, are they walking through the woods together and they're singing this song to try and keep each other calm, you know, because Fiddlesticks feeds on fear. So like you sing this to kind of comfort each other, you know, so your mind just like, especially as a parent, it's like your worst fear, right? Some, this uncontrollable demonic thing is trying to take you and your child. And you're just like, so immediately you feel like, oh, is she trying to hide them? Because then you hear like, it builds to that screaming at the end. And you're like, oh yeah. Or like, if you get like really, I guess, into it or dark, is Fiddlesticks like mimicking her child? That's what a lot of people mentioned actually in that video that I made is people were like saying that the child is actually Fiddlesticks or or, what, or, or the mother, one or the other. It's kind of a modern retelling of the Earl Knick almost. Like yeah. The Earl Knick by uh, Franz Schubert is a song where the father and the son are riding through the woods and the son is being tempted by the Earl Knick, the elf king to basically come with him this isn't exactly like a piece that i like will happily listen to like it's like yeah. i don't dislike it but i'm also like oh it's heavy it's heavy yeah yeah i remember i i made a video where i was like you don't listen to that in your car and someone was like <laughs> oh so now we're listening to music in our cars i guess we're trying to be different today and then like this is really funny and i was like no <laughs> you don't understand the joke is that there was a, a theory professor in school that was like he talked about 12 tone rows and he was like well no one listens to schoenberg in their car which i yeah, think yeah, is hilarious right. yeah. <laughs> No, if I looked over and somebody was listening to either Schoenberg or that Fiddlesticks piece in a car, I would roll up my windows. There's a part in near the beginning where Fiddlesticks actually sounds like his hands are scraping against like a saw or something or like wood in the metal of his hands sort of. I don't know. Fiddlesticks is really an unnerving character. And, and I think what Riot does extremely well is that they're able to extract the music and it sounds really good on its own where you don't need to know anything about it to be like, holy shit, that's intense or like, wow, that's beautiful. Whereas like for you as a league player, I feel like listening to that is you're like coming up with ideas I didn't even consider because I just don't know the piece or the game. No, it's so cool. Like, so as Fiddlesticks, you're the best feeling in the world is to like hide on the other side of a wall. You wait for a team fight to break out. And then when you use your ultimate, you flash essentially from wherever that wall is into the middle of the fight. And what it does is that it fears everyone that's hit by it. And so what Fiddlesticks is, does in the game is he flashes in there, fears everyone, and then feeds on their fear and becomes Whoa. stronger and heals himself while draining all of their energy. So um. it's like, it is like, cause you can five man, you can jump into a five man and, and kill like four or five people with the arms. So it is like, if you do it well and do it, you know, or execute it, which I never do, because I'm very obvious with, uh. my, with my ganks. They do a good job of making it feel like when you're in a team fight and you know the enemy team has a fiddlesticks, you stay away from bushes, you stay away from walls. If you're oh my gosh, bushes, I had no idea. You don't want them to jump on you and like kill your whole team. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> I had never even thought about that. Let's listen to Jin the Virtuoso. Have you ever heard this piece of music? I think I when he first got released, I think I may have watched this. Sure. Cinema. I remember talking to my brother about it and being like, yeah, that was pretty sick. To be fair, I don't think it's a hummable theme. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.
I think it's really interesting because like clearly I think he views himself as an artist. It has these virtuosic passages kind of the you violin know. especially yeah, yeah with the violin doing all those all those like arpeggios but then it has like a stillness and it's almost like is he reflecting or is he like taking in his work and then it bang it has those gunshots he has his yeah. one two three four shots that they like work into that theme i don't know i think it's very cool because you see somebody who like views themselves as an artist and is sculpting this masterpiece, which is, I guess, his body count. Yeah. Uh, for, <laughs> but I, I thought it was very cool because then you get that, that almost mm-hmm. like Whitaker-esque choral music, and then it gets like clustery for a moment there. And it's like, I don't know, does he feel conflicted about what he's doing? Or is it like the meeting of like the artistic world and like the brutal, like, you know, just shooting people with a rifle. So, um, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's very cool. It makes you kind of think about, does he view himself as like somebody who just takes jobs as an assassin or does he like think it's like his responsibility? to create this art that was a year ago that i released that video on on gin and it was really interesting because i actually got a totally you know how when we're in operas and like someone takes i don't want to name any names but someone takes an opera like theme and like flips it on its head like for instance madama butterfly instead of being like in japan you're in the american consulate in japan let's say and it's like it totally changes the entire like way that we view the opera you know una furtiva lagrima from elixir of love you know it it sounds like a sad song but it's actually a happy song so it defies expectations and so with Jin, what's interesting as a this is now my probably my third time listening to this piece and what i find really interesting about it is that i thought it was about him having like self-disgust and 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 feeling like repulsed by his own image and and what he chooses to do but folks explain to me that he's actually just a sociopath now i think i think that's a little one-dimensional because i do think that no one is just even sure. even the most vile person on the planet thinks that what they're doing yeah. is right in, in any a villain in any movie tv show or opera all the best ones for sure so it's interesting to hear you talk about that too and 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 to get this essence of essentially like he's a he's an artist he's a painter he is a craftsman so for him the chorus is not himself looking like i am disgusting i am a piece of shit it's actually like look how beautiful my work is it's it's a very interesting like musical pivot that we only really find when we see the sort of like the three-dimensionality that music creates where we get that subtext it's really interesting to me i think that's one of the things that make leagues that makes league so awesome is that there's just so many different genres and you can really it's just like league of legends radio at this you know what i mean it's like yeah they all and they all fit so well i mean i don't want to step on your toes here and get ahead of you but like the jinx like steampunk stuff you Mm. know you're just like well how does like in what other game do you have all of these like you have heavy metal steampunk classical you know like rap you know it's yeah it's all very it's all very um interesting well i've never heard the jinx theme so let's do that this will be a this will be a a in the moment uh it's jinx the loose cannon right yeah, yeah I think nine so. years ago, yeah. Oh, man, that's taking me back. Whew. In my mind, like she was just released. <laughs> <laughs> oh.
crazy. <laughs> it's crazy because I can't believe it's been nine years. But you know, I've also watched Arcane and stuff. But yeah, what do you what do you think of that music? You clearly hear from the singing how she feels. Uh, I've seen her picture, so like she clearly feels like a sort of Joker esque kind of like Harley Quinn type character, where she's basically just a little bit of a loose cannon. And and that music is crazy because. I feel like the music is so fast tempo wise where it's almost like you don't know what she's going to do next. So it's like, ha, ha, ha. like, it's a, ha. like, she's just manic. Almost. Like she's like, she's high. She's like, <laughs> you know, like there, she, she has these extremes that are really interesting in this music. I don't necessarily love punk or like that style of, of music because it's a little bit too like ruckus but sure. um but it is fun for getting into energy and getting into the zone and doing something i mean yeah am i am i sort of close i mean i don't know nothing about her so i don't i don't know yeah man obviously people are gonna know more about her than i do but i think that nails it on the head even in the arcane series she's constantly torn like she wants to do the right thing then she like something happens to her and she either thinks she convinces herself oh see like i'm, I'm just like crazy bad things follow me i might as well just like go into this Give like into life of, um, yeah yeah and so she's almost like constantly trying to talk herself out of it but then can't help but do the chaotic shit. <laughs> it just it's who she is she's very harley quinn very dark I see. Or very oops i just blew up a church you know <laughs> kind of it's so fun to learn about these characters because they're just so interesting and they're so they're all so uniquely diverse as well like it's it's is get jinxed something she says or is that just her song i don't think she's she says that, but I'm not good enough to play an ADC, so <laughs> I don't. I don't really play here because I'm terrible at. Auto What's an attack. ADC? Uh, attack damage carry or attack move stop. Attack move stop, and so you're clicking the stop key while you're auto attacking things. But oh. trying, to stay, trying to stay out of range of people getting into combat with you. That was yeah. stressful. I don't like to. Uh, I'm playing this game called Arc Knights right now, which is a tower defense game, and anything that's automated where I don't have to push a button or like tap the screen in order to like like have someone do their ability it's like yeah. my preferred way to go like just just give me the easy path forward yes. uh yeah that was fun to listen to i mean it's certainly interesting i'd like to like do a deeper dive on on her let's listen to gwen so gwen and viego are obviously connected because his older creates gwen going back to this sort of soundscape that is really rooted in classical music uh let's let's check out gwen's theme here Thank you. 
But so it's interesting, right? Because the seamstress element there, you hear it in the violins, especially. It's such a like a tightly wound thing. There's almost like a ballet element to it as well. There's a moment where like you can almost see her like frantically like trying to put things back together. Yeah. Or so, so scenes together. And then it's just kind of like a a quiet like rest. And is that, is that her like reflecting on what's happened or is she still experiencing, you know, I guess if, if that's Viego's wife was her creator, right? Mm -hmm. She loses her, her like mother. Yeah. And so in a way it's like her string is cut. And so Mm -hmm. she becomes untethered and she becomes this like kind of dance, like fighter, you know, maybe searching, uh, in that direction for her creator. What I really like about it is that there is a sense of it's really subdued, but there is a sound quality in there. I think also with the strings, especially near the end when it picks up in tempo, where we get a sense of like, you still have the female like humming, but it almost sounds like Gwen decides to pick up, you know, she picks up the scissors, obviously, right? But like, she picks up the scissors and she says, okay, I'm going to continue to to live my life and and I, I will you know pick up the pieces essentially which is a really interesting it's so subtle and like i don't even think that the majority of people would even notice it but for me like at least in my head canon of gwen as i understand her from reading the lore like that to me is really like and there's just a way that the strings sort of like really pick up in tempo but in a very clean way that really <laughs> signifies to me like all right i'm getting up and i'm I'm, I'm moving for as opposed to Viego, which is which we'll listen to next, which is super like <sighs> Rachmaninoffy and like, bleh, you know, well, so apparently Gwen and Viego's theme, one of them is inverted. So one of them is oh. the inverse of the other, which is why they sound the same. Let me let me let me play it for you here. And I, then, think I knew they were connected until you told me. Oh, well, uh. what the fuck? I mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> I only played for 10 years. They're connected through Isolde. And it, because they're both part of the what's the the, the black mist, the green mist, Shadow Isles. They're both short of like the shark. They're both short of they're both. It's there's the there's four other characters mist. that are involved in the mist that I can't remember now. But Viego is one of them. Yeah. Gwen is one of them. Oh, Callista. Callista is one, one of them. I don't know her yeah. music, but I, I know that character's name. And then yeah. there's one more. There's like a, a a large male character. Is it Thresh? Yes. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know how they're connected, but they're all like sort of because Gwen is essentially, if I remember correctly, Gwen isn't Viego brought back to life because of the shadow, the mist, the yes, shadow I stuff. I think in some way. Right. Yeah. So so the two of them are interconnected there, which is really interesting. Well, let's listen to his theme and then we'll we'll talk okay. more about this.
do you see some of the similarities there? Like just this weird, cause you can't really put your finger on it, but there is like a connection somehow. Now that you told me, I was trying to listen to it all the time. So I thought maybe, oh, there I heard it and I heard it there, but I I've definitely felt like I heard it in the very beginning with that like one solo, maybe it was a string. It was interesting cause it was almost like the Phoenix. Do you know that like that piece, the bum, 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 bum. It almost feels like bubbles rising. Oh, bum. I felt like maybe that was the, the Gwen theme there as well. I think it's the Gwen theme that is the reverse of this theme, actually. Either way, I think it's like really cool. Imagine if none of that's true and I just, I'm like making it up. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just eat that oh, shit. Yeah, totally, I heard it. <laughs> so what I really like about Viego's theme, obviously, is the intensity of it in the piano, but it, I feel like these two themes, plus there's another one that's really classical. Oh, Jin theme, um, are so, are so virtuosic that like, I think you could really put them in a symphony hall and no one would be worse for the wear they wouldn't know yeah i mean when you, as soon as you said rachmaninoff i was like absolutely it's the, those absolutely big black chords lush right? just yeah. like almost lugubrious like uh it was, it was awesome it was like mixing three composers in my mind it was definitely felt like rachmaninoff i mm. felt stravinsky a little mm. bit and i felt like almost wc what is that really mm. famous WC piece, like the underwater castle or something? Um, I, I mm, uh, uh, <laughs> sorry. L anyway, La Mer, is one that comes to mind a lot. It has the bum 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 bum. There, I, I can't. I'm not quoting the theme right, but that's. I almost got that in the Viego theme, which almost plays with the island mist theme, kind sure. of. Sure, because that's that's where his like home base is, right? Where yes. he's like, yeah, I think so. I need to get his older back. Yeah. yeah, there's just so many interesting little details in here that are really really fun. I almost felt like there were three themes in there that come together at the end, but the when they come together, none of them fit. So it was yeah. very clashing. So there was like the theme of elegance, right? The theme of this like sophistication. Then there was the theme of love. Yeah. And then there was the theme of sadness. Yeah. yeah. They all kind of came together to make him doing like the ruination, right? Which is right, like, right, 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 right. And so it's like separate. Those things are all valid. But when you bring them together, it creates this like chaotic character. I don't, maybe I'm overthinking. It. No, I, I don't think you are at all because there, there is a sad rage in there that really comes through. And it's like, it's like when, when your back is against the wall and nothing is going right. And you're just like this, this fucking, you know what I mean? Like there's a, yeah. there's an anger in there, but also like a deep sense of like clearly grief. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause like, I guess no one understood him. And so as yeah. was the only thing. And he, I don't know. I find, I find his theme especially interesting. Well, it's um, that weird justified anger. Like you can tell that it feels so right to him. Like, yeah. Well, how else can I go about exacting my revenge to get this person back? You know. Right. We only have time for one more. So sure. you pick Pantheon, Kindred, Udir, Kesante. Oh. Um. Or Aatrox. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I feel like it'll be a little different, either Kesante or Udir. But maybe. All right, you pick between those two. Sorry, man. I'm not. <laughs> let's do Udi. If you were in League of Legends, you would be in the Frail Yard. I think so. <laughs> You'd be out there uh, chopping up some trees and. <laughs> or I'd be like, I don't know. Wait, what did you say? Sorry, you you got cut out. Oh, I said I'd probably own like. I like, love that every time you're saying something, it gets cut out. So I don't. I use it. I you you would what? I would probably own like a bakery in Portover. <laughs> like I wouldn't be a consequential character. I'd be the guy <laughs> whose bakery gets destroyed. God damn it, Trump! Yeah. <laughs>
Oh, I forgot how much I freaking liked that theme. The yeah. breathing in there. Oh my God, that's so good. Like actually they might've been my favorite of the day. It's so funny how immediately that breathing just takes you to a different place emotionally. Mm -hmm. Like it's, It automatically stresses me out. <laughs> Uh, I'm just like, am I exercising? Like, <laughs> what I really like about the breathing, it's just so honest. It's so funny because in voiceover, I've had agents be like, cut the breaths out. <laughs> It's like, wait, what? But the breaths are the most meaningful part. And I think for us yeah. as singers too, like there is something really powerful, I think, to be in an environment where you like breathe in before a phrase and audience hears you, right? Like when you go to, oh yeah, Cha! you know, like it's yeah. just so... Oh, and you can and you can do it like three different ways, right? Or so, I'm sure so many ways. But like what you just did. But then you can also have like if somebody's singing like the Flying Dutchman, right? Mm. If somebody's doing that like this big like, I almost want to feel them take that in like, before they do this. Mm. Yeah, like or you could have yeah. the just like the subtle breath. Yeah, yeah, that just where it draws you in because you just. You want to know. You want to know what's coming out next. Non-musical music is, I think, when combined with music, can be so evocative. You know what I mean? And it's so it can be so personal too. It's it's crazy how like breath. It's like I feel that per that character. I feel I feel like that that person is you know is emerging out of me. So you just listen to an hour's worth of of league themes. How many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, thirteen-ish pieces. Oh. What have you come away with? Having do you feel more connected to league as a game now? Do you think? Yeah, I mean, man, that's like you know, my brother and I talk about that all the time because you can get distracted by how competitive and and toxic angry people get, but it, it is a thoughtful game. You know, it seems thoughtless and it seems brutal and mean, but like it is a well-crafted and like intense experience if you allow yourself to enjoy these characters because i think on its face you're like oh you have two different types of games you have aram you have summoner's rift it's five people it's the same map what's so different about it but they've done such a good job of working the lore into all of these and i guess to answer your question with that music they are so good at crafting the story and crafting the characters musically so yeah i feel like i'm i'm right back in I'm right back in. Like, <laughs> well, I I'm mean, gonna play tonight. I'm gonna wait <laughs> so tired tomorrow. Your brother right I'm now. just gonna be grumpy tomorrow, and I'm gonna be like, <laughs> "Why did I stay up till one hitting the keyboard?" I thought I'm it was too old for this experience. shit. Yeah, and George, my son, will be crying at seven a.m. I'll be like, oh, "Shut up, George." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Daddy was busy. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the frail yard. <laughs> Do you feel like you'll maybe uh, pay more attention when the new champ comes out? Do you think that now that we've sort of had this discussion, I know you're a busy man with your, you no. know, you're doing so many things. No, I, I honestly, I think this was really probably bad for my family. It's <laughs> like, it takes me back to why I love the game. You know, there's yeah. this like, it's so much the music. Like I literally, I get like verklempt sometimes <laughs> listening to these stupid cinemas. And like, it takes me back to a very fun place with video games where they allow you to like just escape and get into this like world that is not real but it, it feels so emotionally captivating yeah and so i feel like i guess to answer your question yeah man next time a music video comes out i think i'm gonna probably send it to you and brian <laughs> i'd love that actually because then i can take it and then use it and and make a video out of it and and league of legends has certainly been such an interesting experience you know i've become really good friends with some of the composers that aren't there anymore but it's been really nice to even just um you know get their perspective on the craft that goes into it and and, and again we're living in a time where there are so many video game music composers and, and in a time when the opera industry is like using the same 10 people for their modern operas or you know it's it's like yeah. it, it's it can get a little bit like okay well like where's the innovation and uh, there's people literally writing classical music that could be in a symphony today or whatever i think it's also good for me because i think sometimes i don't want to speak for you or other classical artists i think sometimes myself you feel like we have we are protecting this beautiful like archaic art form that just like people don't understand it and if they did they would know how valuable it is but it, what it really is is you're supposed to know that this that's what's so cool about music it is evolves it doesn't mean that what we're listening to is any less important from, or any less impactful than Rachmaninoff I've had the same emotions evoked from 
a league cinema as I have, you know, yeah. like watching a really beautiful concert. It's very interesting how if we just allow ourselves to like, because if because if you listen to Jin the Virtuoso and you're like, man, I love these violins, you will inevitably actively stumble upon classical music yeah. Yeah. because it is classical. I mean, just because it's in League of Legends doesn't mean it's not in, it's not yeah. classical music. Kindred yeah. is one of the most beautiful p- piano pieces ever. And yeah. it's not in fucking League of Legends. Or, yeah. or sorry, it's the opposite. <laughs> 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 Point is, is that like there's there's just such a, a wealth of of things yeah. that we can enjoy, and it doesn't make one one or the other, you know. And yes. and I had Jose on a little while ago, and he he you know what's the difference between art versus a, a entertainment? And and I think League does that masterfully, where they combine the two. Yeah, you know? yeah, for sure, for sure. Like, and my wife, I'll be like, babe, you gotta listen to this. It's <laughs> stick. Like get in here, and she's like, "Oh God!" I'm like, "The Earth side, no, no fear." Like you gotta listen to this. Man. The other day, I was playing a, a different game, and and I, I turned to to my fiance, and I go, "I go, listen, I'll be right back. I gotta go kill a dragon." And she was like, "All right, babe, you do what you got." <laughs> Yeah, this is a great yeah. feeling. Well, listen, yeah. Josh, thank you so much for coming on the channel. Really appreciate it. And thanks for listening to this. And for all of you that enjoy League of Legends, because that's who you are, who's watching this very specific League of Legends video. I hope you enjoy this as well. Feel free to like subscribe. There's more videos about League of Legends on the channel and more to come. And as always, thanks a ton. And we'll see you later. Bye, everybody. Take care. See ya. Wave, Josh. What the fuck? Wave. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs>